Good afternoon, good evening, or good night. This is Julie with JFK Freedom. Today is August 10th, but I'm not sure when this will pop up on YouTube. Yeah, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, so I'm actually sitting on my bed, and so I'm holding the mic, so if you hear any weird sounds, I do apologize. I wanted to do a video on hell, because it's been on my mind a lot, like why hell? Uh, why is it eternal? I had some other questions too before the Lord, and... There are some things he's been revealing to me about it and some things he would prefer that I don't share, but there are some things he said that I could share. So I'm going to share basically a large nugget. I'm going to work my way towards the nugget today. And basically, I think sometimes we get a twisted view on unbelievers or people. I want to say those that fall under unbeliever category are like, Let's go with 100% cold towards the Lord. So I'm not talking about the gray area. I'm not talking about lukewarm. I'm talking about people that are cold towards the Lord. Even if they pretend to be hot, pretend to be Christian, in their hearts, they're cold. So that's who I'm talking about today. I don't want to step on anyone's toes, especially if you're thinking about whether or not you want to accept the Lord. I'm not here to poke the bear or make anyone angry. I just... This video is really mostly for believers who may also have some similar questions or not really understand the heart attitude that will be for those who end up in hell. So we're going to start with this verse from Philippians 2 and it says, it's talking about Jesus and how God exalted him and gave him a name which is above every name. And then it says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. On, in heaven and on earth and things under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father okay that's very famous and then if you look at the next verse it says and that's why beloved as you have always obeyed as in my presence not just in my presence but now more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling I think in the back of Christians minds people are adding that verse with the other two so they're thinking of this fear and trembling of the Lord Jesus Christ as something that's to be taken for granted from all humanity at some point. And there is a, there's a German song and it talks about this moment where every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. And then it's like, it really sounds like all the unbelievers will be giving God praise or they'll feel bad about their wrong choice. And that's kind of where my, I'm going with this video today. I'm challenging that thought that no they're not going to feel bad about it in fact they're just going to be mad and more angry and uh and we'll work our way down but basically if you're if you've been through hard times in life and expect someone to say sorry for perhaps abuse they may have perpetrated waiting for that moment to happen in a cold person's a cold-hearted person's heart is pretty much pointless and that's kind of where i'm going with this so it says, okay, so this is Revelation 16, verse 9 and 10. People were severely burned by the great heat, and they reviled the name of God, who has power over these plagues. But they did not repent of their sin and glorify him. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. And people gnawed their tongues because of the pain of their excruciating anguish and severe torment. And that is, um, as I've said before, that is kind of like symbolism of what it will be like in hell for them as they gnaw, gnash their teeth. And the commentary from this Bible, I don't always agree with it, but they did a good job on this one. So this is the commentary based on those verses. They cannot argue against the existence or power of God, but even so, they will not repent and give glory to God. The good news of Christ is still in effect even just before his return, though it is apparently rejected by all be all unbelievers who are still alive. And I don't know if I agree with the all, A-L-L, -L, but in general, it shows that the majority of people who fall under God's wrath will be experiencing that. And this, to me, is the Lord's wrath. I do believe it can show up on the earth in a way. But in general, I believe the Lord's wrath refers to hell. And no, believers don't fall under it, but we might be alive to witness it or its effects in this life. But that's a different point. 
So my point is that the sin will continue. Whatever sin they have embraced, it will continue, which could include, most likely will include, raging at the Lord or hating others. And this is all as a result of separation from the Lord. And in the book of Daniel, it talks about how the holy ones will become holier. So he said, Daniel 12, 10, Many will be purged, purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked will behave wickedly. None of the wicked shall understand, but those who are spiritually wise will understand. So, and he's talking about the end times. So the difficulty that falls on the earth, and basically... The mindset of a believer is able to change and able to turn towards the Lord. And the mindset of a person who's new, lukewarm can change. But someone who's cold and decided they're going to be cold to the Lord is not going to change. And then the wicked remain wicked. And that's that's part of that. I'm going to look at this verse. Actually, I didn't realize the Lord was quoting the Old Testament when he said this. So this is originally from Isaiah, but Jesus said a part of it as well. And they will go out and look on the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. The worms that eat them will not die. The fire that burns them will not be quenched, and they will be loathsome to all mankind. So when Jesus talks about the worm that will not die, many times the Lord uses something physical to also describe something spiritual or emotional. And in this case, the worm that will not die in my view, is a deep dissatisfaction. I believe the Lord has mentioned this to me in the the Rhema, so I give him credit for that. It's a deep dissatisfaction that they will have, spiritually speaking, but it's all based on a decision they make in their hearts to separate from the Lord, despite the great deception. So I think I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I do want to keep this compact, and I'm about halfway through already. So there are the seven deadly sins, which is pride, envy, sloth, wrath, gluttony, lust, and greed. And that's just an example to you what some sins can be. But basically the point is that they will never feel sorry for their sin or be sorry to the Lord or feel sorry to others for what they've done and never cry out to Jesus for mercy. And no one will be transitioning from hell to heaven, although it's possible to fall from heaven to hell. And that is something I received in the Rima and and realize uh, now. So don't be shocked by that last statement. But um, there's a reason that the chasm will be there. And it is a question that I, I kind of had for the Lord. I'm like, Lord, why can't someone just decide, you know, I don't know, 5,000 years into that torture that, you know what? I blame the Lord for this torture for 5,000 years, but maybe I want to stop blaming the Lord and ask Jesus for mercy. The Lord basically revealed to me no one will be asking for mercy. And that goes back to the worm that continues to eat them. It's a basically the wrong view of the Lord and a bad attitude, but they adopt it before they get sent there, basically. Yeah, and just some misunderstandings that the Lord also cleared up for me through the Rima, I think I can mention this, and he has mentioned it as well already. There are no orgies or parties in hell. Many souls will be separated into groups for torture, as the Lord mentioned. And he did also mention that Dante's Inferno is based on true visions and dreams that saints have had in the past. So if you're interested in that book, uh, it's very, it is beautiful poetry, but it gave me nightmares. So I had to stop reading it at some point, Um, but it is very... I just have a very active imagination, but it probably wouldn't be scary to y'all. So that is an interesting resource if you'd like to look into it. So basically, the person chooses to be separated from God. And if a person chooses to do that even now, then they are opening themselves up to be deceived or for the great deception. For the Lord will test everyone before they die. And in Thessalonians, it says they choose the great deception because they did not have a love of the truth. So because they do not love the truth or the Lord, and the Lord is truth, then they will be opened up for the great deception. The Lord will test everyone before they die, and those with more capacity to choose heaven will survive longer into the tribulation if they are not hot or cold. This is also some intel from the private Rima that I've been receiving. And those who are hot and cold will die first. 
which is a mercy to a believing Christian in this hour, despite the sadness perhaps caused by such a loss. There is a time to speak and a time to be silent, so short and sweet, or bitter rather, for today. And that's the end of my message. So this teaching was a mix of, I still call it a teaching, but a mix of the Rima and the Bible. And of course you can pray about the gray areas in your view. And may the Lord guide you into all truth. Remember, to the faithful he shows himself faithful. To the blameless he shows himself blameless. To the pure he shows himself pure. And to the devious he shows himself shrewd. God bless. <laughs>